would love to see you all as well. Uh, Shiri, Mario, listen, tonight we have a, a very, very good session for you all planned out. And if you all know anything about Marvin is he goes and moves with excellence. And that's what we're going to do tonight is just give you as much as we can in the, the short amount of time we are together, the, this 90 minutes we're going to be spending together. We're going to try to fit as much. We're going to try to fit as much value in as possible in this time. So my name is Michael. I'm just going to be your host. And I want to set the ground rules while the room is filling up on a few things. I won't even call them rules, but just principles we like to live by here in Marvin's meetings, because there's certain things that you need to grab onto to maximize the effect of these trainings. So number one is let's play all out tonight. Let's play all out. That means cameras on. Let's have a pen and paper at hand. Let's just show up because listen, one gem you pick up tonight and you take note on could make you extra thousands or millions of dollars over time. But one gem that you don't take because you're distracted or because you don't have a notebook or because um, maybe you're just doing other things could mean you lose thousands or millions of dollars in in what you could have made in the future. So let's play all out. And listen, I want to also say this number two is create a growth environment right now. I want you to find a, a place where you can really zone in on the next 60 to 90 minutes because what we're going to share, we're going to go into systems. We're going to go into sales. We're going to go into marketing. All these things you really need to do to set yourself apart from the com competition is what we're going to go into, but you have to be in a state of mind, in a, a state, uh, an environment, I would say, where you can maximize this event, okay? So listen, let us know right real quick. While Marvin's getting ready, I think they're getting the slides ready in the background. Where are you tuning in from right now? We got about 40 or so people. This should get up to closer to 100. Let us know in the chat right now. Where are you tuning, tuning in from? Let us know right now. I see Detroit is in the building. All right, Atlanta. I love ATL. I'm there uh, often. Who else we got? Virginia. All right. Richmond, Virginia. Several Virginia. Philadelphia. I love it. I love it. Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. Cali. Miami, Florida. St. Louis. All right. We got St. Louis in the building. Atlanta. Dallas, Texas. Penn. All right. Love it. We got people all over the U.S. here. And so this is what I want to tell you guys. The principles that Marvin is going to show you tonight will work really regardless what industry you're in. It doesn't matter if you're in trucking. It doesn't matter if you're a financial advisor. It doesn't matter if you're an insurance agent. These principles are the foundation of building a successful business. So just know, regardless what industry, and actually let's do this because I think Marvin would appreciate this. What, what industry are you guys in? Let us know in the chat. What, what is your business? What do you guys specialize in? Let us know in the chat. Do we have any real estate? Do we have any... Do we have, oh, insurance, man. I, I called that one right earlier. So insurance, I, I love it. Realtor, real estate, I, I love that as well. Do we have any anybody else in here with other industries other than that? General contracting, love it. So this these principles can apply to you if you're in fashion and tech, if you're an investor, if you're in general contracting, if you're an insurance agent, trucking, this can work for you. You just have to implement it one step at a time. So this is what I'm gonna do. I wanna pass the mic over to the man, the myth, the legend, Marvin Mitchell. A lot of you all have been following on, him on social. And actually, let us know in the chat, where did you hear about this event tonight? Let us know right now, where did you hear about this event? Was it social? Was it was it an ad? Let us know right now, because I think uh, our team would like to know, and myself, IG. A lot of you all follow, follow Marvin, and there's one thing I love about this dude, is that he has receipts. He's not just somebody that is, uh, you know, came over covid and was a COVID millionaire, a COVID, you know, a COVID mentor. We, we call them. This dude's been doing business for years, years prior to COVID. This guy was building successful businesses. And so he knows the way. But most importantly, he goes the way. He's a seven and eight figure entrepreneur, Hall of Fame financial advisor. This guy is the one you need to be following. So without further ado, everybody drop flames in the chat. Drop flames in the chat. Marvin Mitchell is here to drop valuable information on you. Let's get it, Marvin. All right. All right. How's uh how's everybody doing today? So I am um very, 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 very excited to to be um, with you today. Um, I'm coming from you today by way of Orlando. So the last three days, I've been to Dallas, St. Louis, and now today, Orlando, making some things happen. Um, so, you know, 
I say that to say that even though I'm traveling all around, uh, my business doesn't stop, which is great. Do I have a brick and mortar? Yes. Do I have an office location? Absolutely. Do I have to be at that office location? Not, never, if I didn't want to. Now, my business is ran by me being a leader. I can be out of the office for 30 days, for a month. I was in Dubai for two weeks. When I was in Dubai, my business actually grew more than when I was actually present. So that's one of the things that I want to get you all to. How do you get to a place where you grow, your money grows, your business grows without you in it, without you being involved? So it's called passive passive money, right? So we've all heard the term, you got to work, 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 work just to get paid. Well, I want to show you how to flip that and get paid, work one time, then get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid. You know, work one time, get paid, get paid, get paid. So somebody write in the comments, get paid. If you want to learn how to get paid, well, you do the work one time and money just keeps coming. This is what I want to show you all. I also want to talk to you today about finances, right? Um, nothing matters if you make a lot of money, but you lose it all due to mismanagement of the money, um, frivolous spending, and not having a, a plan on how you're going to save and invest your money. Uh, I've seen this happen all the time. People get hit with a big lump sum of money. They have a very successful year in business. They get hit with a tax bill. Uh, they reinvest everything back into the business. They don't know how to manage a salary, manage a payroll. They don't know how to invest that money, and they end up losing it all. Um, business owners are the worst. A lot of people think business owners are smarter financially because they're because, you know, successful business owners. Let's say if you have a million plus business, you say, oh, man, they must be good financially. if They're making a million plus business. No, they're the worst. I've seen more million dollar businesses falter and fail because of financial mismanagement. So I want you all to understand it's not how much money you make is how much money that you keep. So that's extremely important uh, for you all to understand. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, in just a second. I'll start off by telling you a little bit about me, a little bit about my story, um, who I am, why I am talking to you today directly. Um, but first, let me take, I like this background, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off real quick because it makes me look like it's too dark. Let me see. Let me change my background. Give me a second. I'm in a hotel, so you're going to notice a bad background, but that's okay. Virtual uh, background, none. And while you're doing that, Marvin, I would like to know who, who in here would like to learn that statement where he said, it's not how much money you make, but it's about how much money you keep. Let us know in the chat. Does that fire you up? Because for me, I'm like, I need that. So let us know in the chat. Does that fire you up? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, definitely. That is that is that's really the key. Um, and I'll tell you, I have learned the hard way. Um, I have been broke. I have been at one point when we were I was younger. Mom had me; she was fifteen. Lived in shelters. I grew up with my dad being in jail my whole life. Grew up in the hood in St. Louis. St. Louis is already one. Of, if you look it up, number one crime crime capital in the world. And I grew up in the worst part of St. Louis. So coming from where I am, uh, I see Ray, Ray knows, coming from where I am, you know, to be able to be in a position where I'm an eight-figure earner and have the ability to give back for free to really help out, help out my people is something that I always said I wanted to do. Uh, when I started off in the financial industry, started off because my grandmother became sick. I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college. I moved back to St. Louis from Texas. I left law school to help my grandmother. She ended up passing away, feeling like she was a burden on the family. She lost half of her money when the stock market crashed. She had no long-term care. Um, and really that inspired me to go into the industry. And when I became a financial advisor, my entire goal was I want to help my people, right? And unfortunately, I struggled um, earlier on. I, I wasn't doing great at all. In fact, when I became an entrepreneur, um, my my I had one month where I had an $80 check. I'll talk about that in a minute. 
So I was talking to one of my mentors. Mentorship changed my life. Talking to one of my mentors and I said, you know, what do I need to do? Uh, I'm working hard. I'm knocking on doors. I seem like I can't get any traction. I want to help out my people. He said, look, the best way to help poor people is to not be one of them. Somebody going to catch that. So I was like, well, what, what do you mean? What? He said, well, you need to go where the money is first. You need to become successful. Once you become successful, then you can go back and help your people. And that's what I did. You know, I became successful. It took me a while. I became a millionaire, a multimillionaire, eight figure earner. And, uh, and I decided I wanted to come back and do things like this just to give you all some of the information that you all don't have. I'm at a conference right now, a financial advisor conference. There's about 500 people here, five black people out of 500 people. So these are the rooms that I'm getting to where I'm able to tell you some of the things that I'm learning in these rooms uh, because we're not getting this information. So um, I started off uh, in the financial industry uh, at Edward Jones. While I was at Edward Jones, um, I was drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, I was doing well eventually. I was I was making, I eventually made six figures which to me, six figures was a lot of money because, again, I grew up with no money. <laughs> and uh, I was making six figures. And plus, I had this big job at Edward Jones, where in St. Louis, if you worked at Edward Jones, you were, wow, you work at Edward Jones. It's funny how you can tell people you got a job and everybody's like, wow, you making six figures. Wow. But if you tell me you're an entrepreneur, you tell me you're an entrepreneur working your, working your tail off, and you're probably making a lot more than you made on the job. It doesn't matter. People... Look down. Oh, okay. That's cool. But why'd you leave Edward Jones? You had the best opportunity. Well, the reality of it is Edward Jones was cool because it was doing what was in the best interest, though, for the company, but not necessarily for the client. And that's one of the things that I had to learn. They were caring about their bottom line. But when I had a client who told me they wanted to be safe and I moved them into a safer position, I actually got, got reprimanded by doing what they wanted me to do. So that sort of forced me out to go out and start my own company. It turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Um, to, to kind of tell you just a little bit about, let me share my screen. Um, real quick. So you know why I hosted this webinar. I want to help out my people. My goal is for you to have financial growth personal freedom. Today's focus, we're going to focus on business growth and protection. And also we're going to focus on life insurance and also estate protection. So who I am, I'm a 17 year Hall of Fame financial advisor, top five finalist for advisor of the year. I've built and I've scaled three multi-million dollar companies. Um, I've helped 11 people achieve as much as a million dollars in a single day. And I did over $7 million in a single day multiple times myself um, through my marketing strategies as well as through leveraging. So I was nominated by the top um, um, top five by Retirement Advisor Magazine. Um, I am on TV. I have a radio show. I was elected to the Financial Advisor Hall of Fame in 2021. I was the youngest um, person ever elected to the Financial Advisor Hall of Fame, and I was the, only the second African American ever elected to, to the Hall of Fame. So, I am a two comma club award winner. And um, there's me with Russell Brunson. I'm an author of four books. I've shared the stages with some of the greats: T.D. Jakes, Myron Golden, Russell Brunson, Les Brown, Grant Cardone, Magic Johnson, and many more. So. My journey to achieving my first seven-figure income. So that's the first thing that I want to talk about with you. So it wasn't easy to achieve um, seven figures. I'll tell you that. I didn't have a coach who was seven figures to teach me how to get there. Um, all I know is that I had to rely, I had to rely on faith. That first $80 check that I got, um, I knew I couldn't pay my mortgage. 
So I learned how to pay my mortgage with a credit card. Anybody ever been in that situation before where you felt like you didn't have enough to even take care of your normal necessities? I know I'm talking to some wealthy individuals in the room. I know you haven't went through anything. But if you have, can you put a one in a comment to let me know I ain't the only one who's been through any struggles in my life like that? I'm not going to lie. I was thinking about, did I make a mistake? Should I go back to my job? At least I got a consistent paycheck when I was at my job. I know I know, I got some entrepreneurs in the room who feel me on that, right? And I, I almost quit. I literally would go home writing thank you cards with tears falling from my eyes, smearing a pen because I didn't know I didn't know if I was doing the right thing. I had to rely on faith. I would walk around and I would have doors slammed in my face. I would get hung up on. I had to go through all of that, like the, the hard knocks um, to, to get there. Right. I had to build that character. And I made every excuse in a book on why I wasn't successful. Um, I was the type of person that was like, you know, number one, I was like one of the only black people who was a financial advisor, um, that I even knew. So I was telling myself is people slamming the door because I'm black, because I'm too young. I was only in my early twenties, um, because I'm in St. Louis and St. Louis is racist. Like, like literally every single excuse that I can make up on why I wasn't being successful. I found myself saying to myself. And it attracted more of the same. It wasn't until I learned how to master my mindset. It wasn't until I learned how to read books such as Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and Influence People, The Magic of Thinking Big. But one of the, the best books that I read other than the Bible, one of the best books that I've ever read was a small little book called The Instant Millionaire. It was probably only 60 or 70 pages. But this book, The Instant Millionaire, is one of the books that I credited to turning some things around. Two books that I credit to really turning some things around for me. That book, Instant Millionaire, I think it's by Mark Fisher. And another book by Og Mandino is called The Greatest Salesman in the World. Now, The Greatest Salesman in the World wasn't even about, it wasn't even about uh, sales. It was about character. I will persist until I succeed. I will act now. I will greet this day with love in my heart. I'm nature's greatest miracle. Always will I seek for ways to um, to um, compliment. Never will I look for ways to criticize. Like these are these are books that I read that worked on my mindset, and I began to do affirmations. I began to do meditations. I began to write down my goals. I did all of those things, and what that did for me. It allowed me to change my mindset. And all of a sudden, nobody was slamming the door in my face anymore. In fact, people were inviting me in. People were inviting me to eat at their table. One guy, I came and knocked on his door and I had on this gray suit. I remember this, like this pinstripe light gray suit. And it looked a mess. I think I got it from the thrift store. And um, he invited me in and he said, look, you're about my size. Come down to my basement. I came down and he he picked out six suits for me to take home. Like people started taking care of me. And, 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 and that's the power. I want to tell you all, you all don't understand how powerful your mind is when you set intentions and you can speak things into existence and then you literally can be viewed differently because you see yourself. When your thoughts change, the things around you change. I can't stress that enough. I can teach an entire class just on the power of your subconscious mind, the power of words, um, the power of speaking things that are not as though they are, the power of um, um, believing in yourself and, and practicing those belief systems. But this is not what this class is about um, because I do want to get into some, I do want to get into some educational content. But um, the way I did it, you all, I had one presentation. A lot of people think you need to do 10 different things to become a millionaire. You really only have to do one thing really, really well and do it over and 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 over again. One thing. For me, I had a 45 minute presentation that I created about 
um, um, investing, about creating a retirement plan. And I began to organize workshops and seminars. And I did that over and over. I did 80 seminars in one year. And I kept getting better. The first time that I did it, I got zero appointments. The next time I did it, I got 14 appointments. Doesn't make any sense, but it just happened that way. And then I got six, and then I got 10, and then I got 14 again, and then I got two. I mean, but I was consistent. I kept doing it. I'm sorry, I'm speaking, so I don't have time to text the books. But um, Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino in the, in the Magic of Thinking Big is another book, Think and Grow Rich, and the other book is Instant Millionaire. So hopefully somebody can write that down because like five people messaged me and said, can you, can you type in the name of the books? Um, all right. So I did that and there was certain things that I learned along the way. Um, business principles that I learned along the way. I want to make sure that I'm gearing this free webinar toward you. I can steer more toward the build, the business building side, or I can steer this more toward the investment side on how to manage your money, how to become your own bank, um, the trust. What do you what do you all think is most important for me to start with? Do you all think like business principles are more important? Or do you think managing your money and multiplying your assets is more important? Write it in the write it in the comments. And then that's what I wanna I, I wanna sort of see, you know, what type of crowd we got today before I really start just teaching. Y'all ain't helping me. It's like 50-50. Okay, it's literally like 50-50. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna make sure I hit on them both. I'm gonna hit on them both equally. Um, so I'm gonna start off talking about business principles, but then I'm gonna lean into, once you start multiplying your money from the business principles, what you need to do with that money and how you need to invest it. And then I'm also gonna end off by bringing on a special guest to talk about how to own nothing and control everything, how to protect your assets by using the trust, which I highly recommend um, because you want to protect what you have. In fact, you don't even want to have. You want somebody else, an entity to have so that you don't have, so that you can't get sued and nobody can come and beg you for money because if you don't have it, you don't have it, right? That's, there's so many people who are looking for your money once you get it. Um, and you will get it because you're on this call. And we're going to show you how to get it. So I'm going to talk really quickly. Let me actually go to my, let me follow my script. I hate following the script, but I want to make sure I'm following bullet points today. So let me see. All right. So believe in yourself. This is my quote. So all of these things have happened because I believe in myself. And here's the deal with you all. I want you to believe in you when no one else believes in you. I want you to know that you can do it when nobody else believes you can do it. I want you to believe that you can do it when you might be struggling, believe it, believing it yourself. If you don't believe it, that you can do this, I want you to borrow my belief system only for today, that you can do it. You would not be taking this time on a Thursday night coming into a call and learning if you didn't have the desire to do something great. And because you have the desire, I know that God would not give you the desire if he didn't equip you to handle the desire to be able to achieve the desire that you have. So what that tells me is that you have everything that you need already. You're already equipped. You just have to embrace the abundance that you already have. See, a lot of people are striving attempting to get somewhere without realizing that you have already arrived. You might be saying, but how have I already arrived? I don't have a million dollars. I don't even have a hundred thousand dollars right now. What do you mean I've arrived? You've arrived because, because you are here, all you have to do is change your mindset and your belief system. And instantly, once you change your mindset and belief system, the opportunities are already around you. You've just been missing them because you haven't recognized them. 
But when you learn how to recognize them and you learn to believe that it can happen for you, you will realize they've been there all along. And once you actually get it, you're going to say, oh, my God, for this 20 years I've been I've been I've been struggling when all I had to do is this. It really is that simple, you all. So, again, these are some of the people that somebody who was raised by a single mom, 15 years old, dad in jail. Some of the things I've been able to do in my life, as I said, Myron Golden, one of my mentors, T.D. Jakes, Grant Cardone. I was on the Breakfast Club, on the stage with Russell Brunson. You, I'm winning the Two Comic Club Award for, for doing a million dollars. Here I am talking to Magic Johnson. He came on one of my personal lives, had a conversation with me and had a conversation with my mentees. Um, just so many things that I've been able to do. It's just been amazing. So first thing we want to talk about is building a successful team in a leadership culture. If you're going to get to the seven figures, understand that you cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it all on your own, right? Um, let me make sure before I get too deep in this. Can y'all see my screen? Nod your head if you can see my screen. Okay, perfect. I attempted to do it on my own when I was initially a, a, a financial advisor and they got me an $80 check. But then I said, but I was hit with that period in point where many of you probably are at the same place right now where you were like, what comes first? Do I need to get the money first and then hire a team? Or do I need a higher team when I don't have the money so that I can get the money? What comes first? What do they call it? The, the chicken or the egg, right? I was faced with that dilemma, and that was one of the big risks that I took. I realized that if I didn't take a risk on myself and just get the team before I had the money, then I would never have the money to get the team. So this is one of the biggest jumps you're going to make. You're going to, and now it's easier. Now, back when I started, I didn't have the opportunities to, I didn't have the opportunities to go out and just hire a virtual assistant for some of you are paying like $4 an hour. I pay mine more than that, a lot more, but um, I didn't have that ability. I had to go out and hire salaries like, $60,000 salaries when I didn't have, when I had $3,000 to my name. It was a scary proposition, but I had to bet on myself. So I was, I, I, I went out and I tried to get loans. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get the money. So eventually I just had to go out and just say, you know what? I'm going to take a risk on myself. I'm going to hire this person, even though I don't have the money and I'm just going to hustle. So I hustled and some weeks I didn't get paid to make sure that I could pay my staff when I first started, just to make sure, just to make sure that I had my team and it paid off for me. I didn't keep that team. I was a horrible manager. People quit on me. I had to fire people. Uh, I probably turned my team over several times because I was learning. But now I've had, now I have a team where most of my people have been on the team for longer than six years. So just understand you're not going to get it absolutely right. But if you didn't get it wrong the first couple of times, then you would not know how to get it right. So the problem with many of us is that we try too hard to be perfect. We try too hard to be perfect. We want everything to be together. Well, I don't want to hire anybody because I don't know exactly what they're going to do. I don't have the best job description. Um, I don't I don't know if I can find enough for them to do. What if I'm not a good manager? What if you think of everything that could potentially go wrong before you hire somebody. Instead of saying to yourself, what if I don't hire them? I'm not going to be perfect. And it's okay to let that person know that I'm not going to be perfect. I'm new with this. We're going to be learning this together. Nobody's going to look at you crazy. They just want to get paid, right? So that's essentially what I had to do. So when I my business started to turn around, I started to get past six figures again following when I hired my first person. Then I hired my second person, which was a marketing person. So the first person was a person who followed up on new business. So once I got, um, once I wrote an application, somebody had to follow up and make sure that the money actually arrived. The second thing I hired was a marketing coordinator. So when I did those 80 presentations, they would show up, organize all my presentations, 
I would just show up to the presentation and speak. And then they would collect everyone's response sheets and set appointments on the spot. And those were the appointments that I actually did in order to make the money that I made. So when I built a successful team and leadership, there are four qualities. There are four qualities that I that I found out that I needed people to have. I needed people to have what I call the four H's. They needed to be humble. They needed to be hungry. They needed to be honest and also happy. By humble, I mean they have to be coachable. They have to be appreciative of the opportunity. They can't be afraid to, to seek help if they need it. Hungry means that I can't be the one to make you hungry. You need to study your job outside of what I'm just teaching you. You need to have the desire to grow and do more. Honest. Um, honest meaning that not, not will they return a wallet if you left it on the bus. No, honest means if they made a mistake, will they openly admit that they made the mistake so that we can fix it? Or will they try to cover it up even if they didn't want me to know? Because that can lead to more downfalls and more trouble along the way. So are they honest? And last but not least, do they have a negative disposition? Do they have bad energy? Or are they generally a happy person? Nobody wants to be around somebody who's a negative Nelly all the time. So when I hire people, I hired them based off of these four things. When I fired people, I fired people based off of these four things. When I first implemented this into my business, I had to fire a couple of people right away because I had to ask myself, if, 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 I, if I had to make the same decision today that I made back when I hired that person, would I make it again? And if the answer was no, the next question was, then why are they still on my team now? All right, so that's called my four H's. So in order to go from good to great and unlock your potential, sometimes you have to do what's uncomfortable and break free from golden handcuffs. You got to embrace this comfort for greater success. So by no means am I speaking bad about a job. I think jobs are important. I think jobs can lead you to higher success in the future. I think um, sometimes people are just not worthy to be, not worthy. Um, people are not built and equipped to be entrepreneurs. Not everybody is built to be an entrepreneur. So there's nothing wrong with a job. However, if that is your path, I'll tell you the most uncomfortable feeling in the world is when you start making more money on your job. <laughs> when you start making more money on your job. It's like the golden handcuffs. They're not paying you enough to really be financially free. But they're paying you enough where you're making more than the people who are in your circles. So you're making, let's say, $100,000. You're making six figures. Your, your crowd is saying, the people who are around you are saying, oh, my God, you're making six figures. Wow, wow, wow. And and because they're not making six figures yet. And but you're not living a lifestyle that you want to. So you're afraid to leave because you're like, well, if I left behind my six figures, then how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this? So you get caught not believing that you are where you need to be. But at the same time. You're staying where you are because you're afraid of what will happen if you leave. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Has anybody been there? Where you were making decent money on a job, and that was that made you because at least you were slightly comfortable. You had that false sense of security, at least. Um, so you definitely got to embrace discomfort for greater success. Um, and you got to envision a life beyond six figures, you all. You have to dream bigger and think beyond the current limits. I constantly put myself in rooms where people are doing better than me. Today, I was reading an article, you know, just when I think I'm doing good, I bought two properties in Dubai. That's amazing. I own this many units of real estate. That's amazing. I'm reading an article where this entrepreneur just went out and bought six business centers that has like 300 offices apiece in each center. Just went out and bought them. I'm like, okay. 
I'm not thinking big enough. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy. I'm content. I'm not. Don't don't get to the point where you're never satisfied. I'm 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 happy. I'm grateful that I am where I am. But also that just stretches my mind to know what's more, what more is possible. Always put yourself into positions where people are doing greater things than you are, because what it does is it stretches your mind. You have to shift your mindset. Making more money is easier when you have a different perspective. You also have to envision your idea of future in three years, your income, your lifestyle, your travel, your personal time. In fact, I want y'all to do that right now. I want you to, to, to close your eyes. And in three years, I want you to envision your life. First off, what type of revenue are you making in three years? Where are you traveling to? What are you doing? Some of y'all not closing your eyes. I can see you. <laughs> I want y'all to really envision this. This is a powerful exercise. It only takes 30 seconds, but it's very powerful. I want you to keep that lifestyle and keep that number in your mind. And I want you to ask yourself, what does it what does it feel like? Feelings is what creates your subconscious mind to not know the difference between the truth and a lie. What does it feel like? What type of food are you eating? What does it taste like? What is, what, where are you at? What does it smell like? I want you to exercise those five senses. How much money do you have? How much money do you have bringing in? All right, the next thing I want you to do, keep your eyes closed. Whatever number you had, I want you to 10X that number in your head right now. So if the number was 300,000, make it 3 million. If it was a million, make it 10 million. If it was 10 million, make it 100 million. Whatever that number you originally had, I want you to 10X that number in your mindset. And here's the question. What are you going to have? Who are you going to have to become in order to be that person who can 10X? What type of, are you going to be able to do business yourself? Or you, uh, do you have to have a team? What type of systems do you have in place? What kind of business do you have? What are you doing? All right. Open your eyes. Now, how many of you can say just by doing that exercise and actually 10 X in that number in your head, how many people can say that they immediately thought of at least one thing that they would need to be doing different because they're thinking bigger? A lot of you. This is a very important exercise because what it shows you is that you limit yourself. You limit your thoughts. Your thoughts cannot go beyond what you limit it to. When you expand what's possible, your mind gives you ideas on how to achieve what you just stated was possible. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he or she. As you think in your heart, so are you. Because you nothing is off limits. You just make it off limits because you are comparing yourself to your environment instead of comparing yourself to what's possible for you. All right, so let me go back to this. So I want you to set audacious goals, 10X your vision, consider necessary changes in systems and personal growth. I want you to reflect on leadership readiness and align with the envisioned success. Leadership is so important, you all. You cannot grow, your team cannot grow beyond your leadership. So I want you to learn leadership. I also want you to set meeting rhythms for your team when you get a when you get a team. So I want you to set 15 minute. I set 15 minute daily leadership meetings on my team. I meet with my team daily to cascade the information to everybody's individual team. So what that means is my leadership team, we get together 15 minutes and then they meet with their own team for 15 minutes and they cascade whatever we 
which means they transfer the information of what we talked about in the leadership meeting to their own team. I also teach them how to lead their team. We also do what's called L10 Leadership Weekly Meetings. These are 90-minute meetings. This is where we identify and discuss issues and we solve problems. I just had one of those today. We think big and we come up with big opportunities. You're not proactively setting meeting rhythms if you have um, team, but you only talk to them. When, so I'm sorry. Most of you are not proactively setting intentional meetings with your team if you have a team. You're only talking to them when you need something or you only talk to them when there is a problem. And when that happens, your team cannot experience growth. They can't experience consistency. If your team doesn't experience growth and consistency, you don't. So I want you to talk about, you know, hiring core strengths and delegation. So for my uh, coaching business, I first hired a virtual professional. And her only job was to go into people's inbox and do organic marketing DMs about the webinar or challenges. So I used to do webinars and challenges. I went into people's DMs. So some of y'all got messages from me on my Instagram. Some of those messages were from me. The majority of those messages was not from me. It was from my virtual assistant messaging you. So some of you all thought you were talking to me, but you really were not talking to me. You were talking to my virtual assistant. Now, when I replied back, those were really me. But that first initial message was not me. It was my virtual assistant. In fact, that virtual assistant is on here, Pat. Pat is the one who messaged you. It wasn't me. Uh, also, that person was going to go to other groups who have the same interests of the clients and have the virtual assistant message individual people in those groups and personally invite them to your webinar. So you don't have to do dinner seminars like I did. You can do virtual webinars. Don't cost you anything. Also hired appointment setters. And they do the client follow-ups. So what an appointment setter is, is let's say um, if, if it's a, um, when I tell you to set an insurance appointment, the first person that you meet with is my appointment setter. My appointment setter is going to get some additional information from you and once she gets that additional, once he or she gets that additional information, they're going to qualify you and pass you on to my sales team. The goal is to delegate tasks that you don't enjoy or that you are not good at doing. So let's talk about sales and marketing. You must keep your marketing simple. Some of y'all are trying to do 10 different things when it comes to marketing. Don't overcomplicate things. Confuse people, write small checks. Don't confuse people. You need to find one core offer, one core skill set, and repeat it over and over and over. Stop listening to these fake internet gurus who are talking about the only way to wealth is multiple streams of income. No, the only reason why they have multiple streams of income is because they focus on one thing and it worked. And because now that they have the money, now they can go out and get the multiple streams of income, but they didn't initially have the multiple streams of income. You can also create continuity programs like memberships for residual income. So find ways to charge small monthly amounts. So what I mean by that is if you are afraid that you can't charge 10000 surely you have a skill that you can charge $30 a month. I don't care what you're doing. There are people who teach people how to tie their shoes that charge $30 a month. There's a person who teaches people how to do a headstand, literally, that charges hundreds of dollars a month. So you can find a skill set, get good at it, read a couple books and teach people what you know, or go to a conference, take notes, because most people are not reading the books and going to conference and just teach them what you learned in the conferences. And you don't have to know it all. You just need to be one step ahead of somebody. You don't have to be. In fact, people say, well, why would I? Why would I do insurance if most people are going to go to you because you got this big name in insurance? So why would I do insurance? Well, guess what? There are people who will do business with you that will never do business with me because they think in their mind that I'm too far ahead or that they can't afford me. So they're going to be more comfortable doing with business with somebody who's newer. 
So understand that you have a voice. I want you to build relationships and, and community through local events. I want you to give to your community consistently to build trust. I want you to leverage influencer marketing. That's what, what I did on unintentional. So how I grew my brand and how I became known as this insurance expert is I got on people's podcasts. I started growing my social media following. Anybody can do a YouTube channel, be a guest, be a guest on, on, on people's, um, you know, get together with some people in this room and go live together where you could cross um, cross pollinate one another's um, audience. So those are some things that you can do. Also, free webinars that lead to paid programs. So this is a free webinar that I'm doing right now to educate you. And I give you everything. And these free webinars, I don't hold back. I, I, I attempt to give you, obviously, I can't give you everything that I know in one you know, hour and a half webinar. But I attempt to give you as much that I can. I don't hold back. Why? Because giving you information is not the same thing as giving as giving you transformation. Some things can be taught, but some things can't be taught. They can only be caught. And the only way they can be caught is if you put yourself in the environment of bigger thinkers who are going to help you get to that goal and help you to think differently. You can take the information all you want to. The information is going to get you some success, but the information can only get you so far if you don't have the ability to transform and practice over time. So never be afraid to give away free information. I want you to build, um, the next thing is build wealth and protecting assets. And we're going to bring in a special guest. But before we do that, I want to teach you all a little bit about, about, you know, taking your money out of the business. Do not be that person who's saying I'm putting all of my money in the business and, um, and I'm not taking any profits for myself. Let me see. Let me... Stop sharing the screen. All right. All right. What I'm going to show you really quick, you all, is a real quick lesson on what I do with my money. So I have right now over $700,000 in cash value. Cash value insurance. I call it my wealth creation fund. I have stocks. I have uh, crypto. I have um, ETFs. I got a lot of different investments, but life insurance has always been my foundation. Life insurance is where I funnel my money through first because when it when I funnel it through my bank, now I can borrow against it and it continues to grow as if I never touched it. Very important. I want you all to understand this. What many of us do, not many of us, almost all of us do, we get paid, and once we get paid, we put our money in the bank. And then once we put our money in the bank, we take it out of the bank and we pay our bills or we buy things. In the meantime, the bank is using your money to make money. And the bank's number one asset is life insurance. What I'm telling you to do, yep, they're leveraging it by 10. What I'm telling you to do is take the money and funnel it through a wealth creation fund, which is cash value life insurance, and then borrow against that to pay your bills. It sounds like the same thing, only difference is once it hits your life insurance, even when you borrow against it, that money continues to grow as if you never touched it. So... If I had $100,000 in cash value, I'm sorry, if I had $100,000 at a regular bank and I took out and it was earning 5%, one year later, it's 105,000. If I have $100,000 at the bank earning 5% and I take out 30,000, now I'm only earning that 5% on that $70,000 that's remaining. Does that make sense? If it's in my life insurance first and I have $100,000 in my cash value, then I don't touch it one year later, it's 105000 If I have $100,000 in my cash value life insurance earning 5%, and this time I borrow $30,000 against it, one year later, it's still $105,000. Why? Because me borrowing from that policy doesn't impact the growth of that account. 
is going to grow the exact same whether I borrow against it or not. If I don't pay it back, I'm not being forced to. It's simply subtracted from my death benefit when I die. My death benefit is always higher than the cash value. So if my money is growing the same, if I borrow against it or if I don't borrow against it, what do you all think? Should I borrow against it or should I not borrow against it? If you're borrowing against the cash value, you're not borrowing against the death benefit. You're only borrowing against what you put in, but you're creating a snowball effect. Okay, I'm a little bit concerned. Only one person in the chat. There are 63 people in this room and only one person said borrow. I'm a little bit concerned. That means y'all have walked away from the screen, turned your cameras off, not paying attention, or you just confused and I'm not teaching good. Something's going on. Let me know. All right. Borrow. Now, when I borrow against my money, do you think I should buy an asset or do you think I should buy a liability? Thank you. Now, that's the type of participation I'm talking about. Yes, an asset. Because now I can make my money grow multiple times off the same dollar. So what I want to do is give you all a real quick lesson on life insurance, you're going to know more about this asset than 95% of financial advisors. I promise you. In just 10 minutes, you're going to know more than most agents know, or at least more than they're willing to tell you. Why do I say that? Because when you learn how to structure your policies right, most of the insurance agents and most of the insurance industry won't be happy about it because they take 70% less commission. It's hard to get a man to understand something that their wallet depends on them not understanding. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, let me go here. All right, so first off, I'm going to go through this quick. Some of y'all seen this already. There's three different types of people when it comes to money, you all. You have a debtor, a saver, and a wealth creator. The debtor goes into debt, and then they spend their life trying to get out the rent race. They pay it off. Then they go into debt again. They got these student loans. They got these credit cards. Then they then they're trying to pay it off. In fact, their goal is simply to be debt-free. They say, if I can simply be debt-free, I'll be okay. But debt-free simply means that you're at zero. There are homeless people on the street that are, that are at zero, but that doesn't mean they're in a better financial situation than you are, right? We don't want to just survive. We want to thrive. So the next person is the saver. The saver, they're going to save, 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 and then they're going to pay cash. They're going to save, 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 and then they're going to pay cash. How many savers do we have in the room? So the savers seem like they're in a much better position than a debtor, and they and they are a little bit. But the problem is, is that every single time that the saver saves and then pays cash, they interrupt their forward momentum. And they have to save again just to catch up with what they spent. So they're not making money off the money that they spent. I'm hoping that makes sense to somebody. If I had $100,000 and I spend $70,000, I only have $30,000 left, which means I'm only earning interest on $30,000. I got to build my savings back up to the $100,000 before I'm making the same amount of interest again. Does that make sense? The third type of person is the wealth creator. This is the person who never stops the forward momentum of their money. They just grow and grow and grow and grow. When it's time to make a purchase, they borrow against themselves and they simply pay it back. Every time they borrow and then pay it back, their money was continuing to grow as if they never touched it. This is what I'm talking about with the life insurance. So let's talk about the problems with paying cash. So to pay cash, you first need to save the cash. 
Then you have taxes. Then you must drain the tank, which is killing the compound interest. Okay. You lose control in the interest you could have earned had you not drained the tank. So this is a really good example. Let's just say I saved $30,000 a year and I was making 8% average rate of return. And I did this over a span of 30 years. But every five years, what if I drained my tank? And it took me five years to get back to where I was. That's what most people do. The red represents this scenario. You're saving, saving, saving. And then you pay cash. And then you got to build it up. And then you pay cash again. You got to build it up. Then you pay cash. This is the rent race. The wealth creator, they use the life insurance first and borrowed against it. So their money just continued to compound. I want to make sure this is clear. They bought the same exact things. They saved the same amount of money. They earned the exact same interest rate. They just structured the way that they were spending their money and they leveraged the money that they were spending. The difference is, is amazing. So the person who did it the way that the red did, the delayed way, was they ended up with $220,078 at the end of 30 years. The person who did it the way that I'm showing you ended up at $3,700,376 completely tax-free. Which position do you want to be in? These are some of the secrets of the wealthy that they understand that you don't know. And I don't want to hear you say, well, that's because they're already rich. That's because they already have money. No, this works whether you have $200 a month you can save or $2 million a month that you can save. The concepts are the same. All right. Is that eye opening for anybody? If this is who you want to be, I want y'all to type who you want to be in the, com in the comments. Do you want to be a debtor? Do you want to be a saver? Or do you want to be a wealth creator? Absolutely. Absolutely. You are a wealth creator, you all. You have to be a generational curse breaker in your family. Your children are dependent on it. Your children's children are dependent on it. So when you learn how to do this right, you can actually put money into your life insurance policy and can actually borrow from it as quick as 10 days and use that money for bills. You can even do this to get out of debt faster. Even if you don't buy assets, you can just get out of debt faster. So. I'm gonna go over the private reserves um, strategy, but let me let me go over the amount you have in your private reserve account that can be collateralized. So three things you can do to increase your cash value. Number one, you got to make contributions, so your cash value increases when you contribute to it. Number two, internal growth. This is the internal growth that you get on your um, assets because they do pay you. And then if you pay off your loan, obviously the ability to borrow more increases. So whether your, whether your goal is asset protection or whether your goal is debt elimination, you can do all of, or, or, or asset maximization where you want to multiply your money all of this can be done through this strategy. It's just structuring it different. Okay, let me see something really quick. This is good information, you all. This is free information. I use a charge. I still do. Thousands and thousands of dollars to, re to release this information. So hopefully you all are appreciative of that. So when you do get a private reserve, you all, there are some idea characteristics and benefits that you want when you have a, a private reserve. This is private reserve is the cash value that I'm talking about. But let's just assume that we're not talking about the life insurance right now. 
in any private reserve, you want tax deferred growth. You want tax free distributions. You want a competitive return. You want high contribution limits. You want to be able to have deductible contributions if possible. You want collateral opportunities. That's the ability to borrow against your policy. Of course, you need it to be safe with no loss provisions, which means you don't want to lose. You want guaranteed loan option, which means nobody can turn you down based on your credit score, based on your, your past life, none of that. You want unstructured loan payments, which means that nobody's calling me if I can't pay my loan back. I don't have to pay it back. It's unstructured. You also want liquidity use and control of your money. So you don't want to put all of your money into a 401k where you can't touch that money until you're 59 and a half without a penalty, for example. And you also want additional benefits. So this is how the private reserve works. The permanent insurance as a private reserve works. You have your cash value that you built up. You have the insurance company who sold you the cash value policy. And then, of course, you have the assets that you want to buy. So what you want to do is you're going to borrow against your cash value. So if I have $30,000 of cash value and I said I want to borrow $15,000 against my cash value, they're going to put a lien against it, which means that if you, you don't have to pay it back, but when you die... They're going to take what you borrowed against your cash value as well as your the interest and subtract it from the death benefit. They're going to give you an interest-only loan. You're going to take that loan to buy an asset or buy whatever you're going to buy. I recommend that you pay it back. You don't have to have, to have any timetable. But when you pay, pay it back, what happens is it releases your um, collateral position and allows you to borrow from all of this money again. So permanent life insurance, when it is designed and utilized properly, can provide stable growth, cash value, guaranteed loan access, no annual taxes on growth, death benefits, additional benefits um, are available too. So I want to end by giving you a really quick lesson on life insurance. You already know more than most people know, but you really going to know more than most people know after this. This is going to be so easy to understand. Let's say you had a $500,000 death benefit. Now, if you have a $500,000 death benefit, there's a minimum amount that you can pay to get that death benefit. And there's also a maximum amount that you can pay to get that $500,000 death benefit. Write in the chat, if you haven't listened to me before, write in the chat who determines the minimum. Who determines the minimum amount that you put into a life insurance policy? While you're doing that, I'm about to go get me a drink of water really quick. One second. Okay, so a lot of people saying you, the agent, the company, the underwriter, insurance company. So the answer is actually the insurance company. The insurance company. The insurance company, they have underwriters who can see what's the most amount of profit that they can get by charging you the least amount. Most people don't understand um, how that works. Now, who do you all think the term is the maximum amount that you can put into a policy? Write that in the in the, in the um in the um chat. Okay, it's the government. Why would the government be concerned with how much money you're putting into a life insurance policy? Why would the government care? Tax it. Now. In the old days, now there are, there are many ways that you can kind of structure these policies, right? Infinite product designs. But in the old days, wealthy people would just dump millions of dollars into these policies because there was no rules for maximum amounts. And they would do that to avoid taxation. The government didn't care because they were doing it too. But eventually they said too many people started to find out about it. So what they did is they started marketing 
in the 1980s, they started marketing. We got to get people to save somewhere else. People don't realize that 401ks, IRAs just came about in the 80s. So what they did was they created qualified plans, the government. Now, the qualified plans, which are 401ks, SEPs, 403bs, they basically wanted to create a plan that if you saved in it and it grew, you couldn't touch it until you're 59 and a half. And then when you took it out, they can control taxation, which means they can charge you whatever they want to charge you at that particular time. And there was nothing you could do about it. And if you try to take your money early, they're going to penalize you 10%. So they wanted to have control over your money. You essentially created the government's savings account, not your own. You didn't even know that. Now, what they said was, if you overfund this policy, we're going to tax it the same way we tax your 401k, your SEP, and your 403b. That's going to be called a MEC. What a MEC means is that you've turned your policy into a modified endowment contract. That means it's now taxable. It's modified. It's now. So in order to avoid a MEC, there are certain things that you do where you can structure it, where you can contribute to the policy over at least seven years instead of all at one time. And that's one of the rules that keeps it from being a modified endowment contract. So if I was going to do the minimum amount, oops, let me see. What is that called? It's called term insurance. Term insurance has one benefit. These are the primericas of the world. They only sell term, or you could think of any term business. The only benefit they have is the death benefit. Now, term isn't bad, but understand that the only benefit is the death benefit. There is no cash value accumulation. Because there's no cash value accumulation, understand that if you die and that term expires, you get no death benefit and you also can't take any money from it while you have it. So if I had a choice to put $500 into a policy or $10,000 in a policy to get the same death benefit, you all are smart people. Most of you are going to say, well, I would put the cheapest amount I could, $500. I'm going to buy term and invest the difference. But some of y'all are like, there has, some of y'all got to be thinking, there has to be a reason why wealthy people and so many other people choose to put the $10,000 in instead of only $500. It better be some good benefits. So what are those benefits? Well, you got the benefits or you get that money to use during your lifetime. It's life insurance, not death insurance. You can use it while you're living. And you have tax deferred growth. You'll have tax free distributions. You protect yourself against taxation. You get a competitive return. You get high contribution limits. All you have to do is restructure the death benefit. You get additional benefits. You can borrow against that money and it continues to grow as if you never touched it. It's safe. You can't lose. Guaranteed loan options. Unstructured loan payments. I don't have to pay it back. Liquidity use of control of my money. I don't have to wait until I'm 59 and a half. So they use it as a tax-free savings vehicle that they can leverage. And that's the same thing that you will learn how to do. So you want to structure it for the lowest amount of death benefit and the highest amount of cash value. See, most policies are structured for the highest amount of death benefit with the lowest amount of cash value. That's why you end up paying a lot more fees. And that's why you don't see your policy growing any cash. And they tell you that you can't borrow from it until after seven years or after a couple of years because all of that money went to the death benefit. But when you structure it the right way, you pay less fees and you can borrow more of that money soon. So that's how that works. You all. So we want a maximum efficient contract, which means that we want that we want to borrow up into that line. So this is how we want to do. We want these are the benefits. See that blue shading? The closer we get that up to the line, the more of those benefits we get. And look at what else is happening right here. Increase in face value. A lot of people don't understand that when you structure it right. The more that your policy grows, the death benefit also increases. So some people will say, 
Well, don't you lose the cash value? Uh, don't you lose the cash value if you surrender the policy? It's funny. As soon as I said that, somebody was typing that in at the same thing. Um, don't you lose the cash value if you surrender the policy? Or if you die, don't you lose the cash value? If you had an increasing death benefit, your death benefit was increasing by the amount of the cash value, which means that even if you lose the cash value, it was replaced by the higher death benefit. But people don't realize, don't understand. So, again, your permanent insurance as a private reserve. This is why we want to use permanent insurance as your private reserve to borrow from it and then buy assets from that money. When you use it to buy assets from that money, you can do things like I did. You can borrow from it to buy real estate. You can borrow from it to get loan to do loans. You can borrow from it to buy vehicles. You can borrow from it to pay off your debt. There's so many things I can teach. I don't have time to like teach you everything, <laughs> but I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna teach you like ten times as much information when you come to my five day challenge that's on January the eighth. We going in depth about I'm showing you I'm showing you a couple of my policies I'm showing you how to borrow against your policy I'm showing you what to do to get a policy loan I'm answering the questions about um what type of policy do you get do you get a term a whole life permanent life um how do you how do you buy stocks or buy assets once you borrow against your policy um I'm teaching you all of those things when you come into my five day challenge but before I tell you about the five day challenge which starts on January the eighth which you're going to get a special deal for today. I want to bring up uh, my partner, Christina. And Christina is one of the goats when it comes to trust and buying nothing, owning nothing and controlled everything. And one of the reasons why I trust Christina to talk about this topic, not only is she the expert in trust, she lives it. Not only does she have her own trust and she's helped over 300 people to create their own trust, she also has been doing the life insurance thing before she even met me. And she said she's been teaching her students that their first asset should be the life insurance. So we have been aligned on that on that level. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Christina to talk to you for a short time around the next 15 minutes about trust. And believe me, when she teaches this, you all. She teaches this for five days for two and a half hours a day. So me telling you her to talk for 15 minutes, she's probably like, how am I going to do that? But I wanted to at least inform <laughs> you all about what's possible for you. So with that being said, go ahead, speak and, um, and, and educate the people. All right. Thank you, Marvin. I appreciate it. So hello, everyone. My name is Christina Yvette. I am a trust strategist. So I'm here today to talk to you guys about trust. Okay. So like Marvin said, I live and breathe trust. That's exactly what I do. I've been operating as a trustee since 2015 because I bought investment property and I wanted to protect that property. I didn't want anyone to be able to sue me because that property was being rehabbed. And if they stepped on a nail or if the roof caved in, I would lose that house. And I didn't want that to happen. So my mentor told me I needed to put that property under a trust and I followed directions and I've been grateful ever since. So I want to talk to you guys about how y'all could protect your assets as well is vitally important. Okay. Because right now you're in the position to where you are building generational wealth. I see you doing it. I talk to you guys every single day about it. I see it all over social media. You are intentional about building generational wealth, about investing, about becoming your own bank, all of these things. But we don't ask ourselves, okay, when I get the money or when I get the asset, what do I do with it, right? And so you're not putting yourself in a position to where you're protecting the asset or you're preserving the wealth, or you're even thinking about how is this asset going to be transferred, right? And so that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today, right? So 
let's talk about it. A trust, you guys, is an entity, right? It's a living, breathing entity just like you. You are a living, breathing entity. So anything and everything that you can do, a trust can do, okay? So if you could build credit, a trust could build credit. If you could buy a house, a trust could buy a house, okay? So there's no limitations to what a trust can do. A trust is actually a contract, you guys. It's a private contract, so you don't have to register it anywhere, and you can just operate this entity. So you can get an EIN. In, you can open up a bank account and you can actually put assets into the trust, which is the most important thing, right? Because if you are operating with a trust, you're actually, whatever assets that you put inside of the trust is protected. It depends on the type of trust that you are setting up, right? So with the trust, like I said, it's a contract. There are several different parties involved. The parties are one, the creator, which is the grantor. So that's the person who sets up the trust. The second person is the trustee. That's the person who is operating the trust on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So that's going to be you, the person who's actually in control of those assets. And then the third party is the beneficiary. That's the person who's going to be benefiting from the trust. So that's either your kids or that could be another entity, okay? So there are several different types of trust, you guys. But I'm going to break down the two types that every single um, trust falls within these categories. And it's revocable versus irrevocable. You've heard these terms before, right? And so a revocable trust is a trust where the grantor, which is the creator of the trust, they have revocability, meaning that if they were to put property into the trust, they could take it back, right? They could actually terminate the trust at any point in time if they want to. They could could remove the trustees, they could remove the beneficiaries, and they can make changes to the actual trust, okay? Because it's revocable um, and it can be changed by the person who created it, creditors can actually come after this type of trust, which is not what you want, right? You're in the business of protecting your assets. And so you don't want to get the type of trust where a creditor can come after it, sue you and take the assets outside of the trust or from the trust. Okay. Another thing is because it can be changed by the person who created it. If you were to end up in a lawsuit, the judge can decide to pierce through that trust force you to bring that trust to court. And then at that point, that trust becomes public. It's no longer private. And now everyone's going to know the different parties, right? So they're going to know who the beneficiary is, what assets you have in the trust that you are associated with the trust. And the whole point of the trust is one, to protect your assets and to remain private, right? You don't want people knowing that you own 10 houses in this county, okay? So that is with a revocable trust, okay? Um, the other type is irrevocable. An irrevocable trust is where the grantor or the creator of the trust has what we call irrevocability. So they cannot make any changes. They cannot terminate the trust. They cannot remove the trustees or beneficiaries. And if they were to put property into the trust, they cannot take it back. So that is the that only applies to the creator. So one, you want the best type of trust, right? And so with the irrevocable trust, creditors cannot come after this trust, okay? There's no way for them to penetrate trade through an irrevocable trust. Another thing is if it were to end up in a lawsuit because of contract law, the judge is not going to pierce through the trust and force you to produce the trust in court. Okay. So that is what we call a bulletproof trust. And that's the trust that you want, but you want to make sure that you are the trustee of the trust because you want to put yourself in a position to where you are controlling the assets, you're operating the trust, you have all the power and all the control. So what you're going to do is you're going to appoint someone else to be the grantor of the trust. That person could be a sibling, a parent, a grandparent, a neighbor, whoever you want, okay? So a trust can actually protect you from bankruptcies, from lawsuit, from probate, from divorces, from all kinds of things, right? Which is exactly what you want because 
We are in the business of creating generational wealth, right? And so if you're creating generational wealth, one thing that you need to ask yourself, which I see it all the time, right? You got the house, you got the car, you got the six figures in the bank, but you never ask yourself, if I don't wake up tomorrow, how is that house going to be transferred from my personal name to my child's name? You never ask yourself that question because if you did ask yourself that question, you would already have a trust. You would already have your affairs in order. So that's that's why you need a trust, right? In order to get your affairs in order, because it's going to happen regardless. If you have assets, you're going to end up with an estate and you're, you have to determine if you want to create your own estate or if you want the state to create one for you. Because if you didn't wake up tomorrow, then guess what happens? The state is gonna create an estate for you and they're gonna dump all of your assets into the estate and then they're gonna drag your estate through probate, which is not what you want, right? You're doing your family a disservice if now you're putting them in a position to where they have to go to probate. Because that means that now there's a judge who's going to make the decision on if your son or your daughter gets your house or if the house needs to be liquidated in order to pay your student loans. So which one do you want? Do you want to make sure that your assets are protected and they actually go to your heirs or do you want to leave it up to, you know, the state of, of New York or the state of Georgia, the state of Florida, right? You don't want to do that. So that's why when you ask yourself this question, how is my house going to be transferred to my child? You need to know that one, a will is not good enough, okay? A lot of people think that they're secured because they have a will. A will is a wish list, you guys. It's not going to hold up anywhere. So you need to actually have a trust because a trust can own that house. And now if you put that house into the trust, you don't have to worry about um, about the ownership anymore because the house is going to remain in the name of the trust. And if anything were to happen to you, there's nothing that your child has to do because they're the beneficiary of the trust. So your house then becomes protected. And that student loan debt that you had or that credit card debt that you had, that dies with you because those creditors cannot come after your trust because your trust is a separate entity from you. So your, your assets are protected, which is exactly what you want, okay? So now that your, your assets are protected, you also want to make sure that you're structured properly, right? And so I always tell people, you need multiple trusts. You're not gonna put all of your eggs in one basket. So if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, you need a business trust. Why? Because you're operating, let's just say, with an LLC. And LLC stands for Limited Liability Company, okay? So that means that your liability is limited. So if somebody, let's just say a customer decided one day that they wanted to sue your business, guess what? All they have to do is go down to the Secretary of State's website to find out who the owner of that business is. And then they can come after you or they can come after the business. So let's just say that they decided to sue your business. You do not want to wait until you are sued in order to protect yourself or your business. Okay. Your business is an asset. So if they decided to sue your business, they can actually, um, and your business, right, can't fulfill that judgment, then the judge can pick pierce through your company and go after the owner. If you are the owner, that means that now they can come after you personally, which means that they can, you know, take your assets. So if you have a house, they can seize it. If you have, you know, seven figures in the bank, guess what? They can garnish that. Is that what you want to happen? No. Well, if you're operating an LLC under your personal name, then that is highly likely of happening if somebody decided to sue you. So in order to protect yourself and to protect that asset, which is your business, which is where, you know, the money is coming in in order for you to provide for your family, then what you want to do is you want to actually have a business trust be the owner of that LLC. So you're going to remove yourself, you're going to add the business as the owner, and then you are, you are protected because now you have that first layer of protection. Because if your business is sued, they're going to go after the trust because the trust has full liability and you have no liability as the trustee of that trust, which is the position that you want to put yourself into, okay? So um, another thing is that we can actually have the beneficiaries of the business trust be your family trust because 
all the money is coming from your business and you want that money to be able to flow into your family, you got to provide for your family, okay? So you're going to make the beneficiary of your business trust your family trust. And so now all that money's flowing into your family. And one thing that I love about these entities is that you spend the money first and then you get taxed on what's left over versus us, you know, W-2 employees, we actually get taxed first and then we get to spend the leftover. So uh, we're tired of spending the leftovers. We actually want to spend the money first, which is what a trust can actually help you do. So the money that's coming into the business, you, what you can do is you can flow it to the beneficiary, which is the family trust. And now you can spend all that money on your family, right? So let's just say 100,000 came in, you spent 70 on your family. There's $30,000 that's left. Well, what are you going to do with that $30,000? You can either pay taxes on that 30,000 or, you can donate it. You can donate it to your nonprofit tax exempt trust, okay, which could actually help you reduce taxes. Because let's just be honest, they are trying to take half of our income in taxes. And if you put yourself in a position to where you get to save taxes by reducing them, utilizing a trust, then guess what? You get to invest more of that money that you don't have to give to the IRS. Okay. So you're going to use um the tax exempt, the tax exempt trust in order to save taxes because that trust is actually exempt from paying federal taxes due to the separation between church and state, which is what you want, right? We can label that trust as either a ministry or as a church or anything like that, faith-based organization, all these things. But at the end of the day, you get to save taxes. If you are a W-2 employee, you can donate up to 60% of your salary to that trust, which means that now you're only going to be taxed on 40% of your salary versus 100. So that's definitely what you want. And the last thing that I'm going to tell you guys about is assets, right? We're talking about these assets and you might already have assets, which is wonderful. So the first thing that you want to do is transfer those assets into the trust, right? But let's talk about you actually acquiring assets for the trust, right? So you already got your trust set up. You got your bank account set up. Beautiful. Well, what's the first thing that you want to do is you want to one, build credit with that trust, right? With that business trust, you can actually build credit just like you would with an LLC or a corporation. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to leverage OPM, other people's money. So you're going to leverage that credit, okay? And now you're going to be able to pour it into assets. There's two assets that I recommend. The first one is the insurance policy that Marvin has been talking to you guys about, right? That is the first asset that you need to put inside of your trust. Why? Because it's building cash value, right? So you want to be able to pour your um for the money that you are, you know, acquiring your revenue into that. So you want to put yourself in a position to where you're paying yourself first. We are so used to getting paid last, right? So when we get a paycheck, guess what? The IRS took theirs, Medicare, Medicaid, 401k, and you name it, and we get the leftovers. So, and we deposit it into the bank, and then we start paying our mortgage, our groceries, car note, gasoline, all this stuff. No, what you need to do is you need to put yourself in a position to where you're paying yourself first by dumping that money. When you get paid, that money goes into your policy and then your cash value is increased. And now you're going to be actually getting compound interest on that cash value. But that policy that Marvin is talking about, that policy needs to be owned by your trust. OK, that policy needs to also the trust needs to be the owner of that policy, the payer of that policy and the beneficiary of that policy. That is super important because if anything happens to you, the trust needs to be paid back. OK, so if anything were to happen to you, that death benefit is going to go straight to the trust fund. And that is how you're going to put yourself in a position to where you are preserving your wealth. OK, so a lot of us, we don't even think that far ahead. It's like, OK, we got the million dollars, but then how do we preserve the million dollars? We hear it and see it all the time 
where these famous families, these athletes, they had all of this money and guess what? The money disappeared by the second and third generation. Why? Because they didn't have these tools in place, because they didn't have a trust, because they didn't have um, a whole life insurance policy, okay? So you need these tools and able to preserve your wealth if you are serious about building generational wealth, okay? So like I said, the trust is going to be the owner of the policy. So your trust is actually going to take out a policy on every single person associated with the trust. So that's you as the trustee and that's your beneficiaries and that's the future beneficiaries, which is super duper duper important, okay? Because you are a human asset. You're what we call human capital when we're talking about this trust, okay? So with that being said, you need to be insured, right? And so every single beneficiary that is born into that estate, the trust is going to take out a policy on them, okay? That is where that term trust fund baby comes from. We hear it all the time and we we need to normalize that in our community, okay? To where we have, oh my God, my uh, computer is telling me it's about to die. So we need to normalize that in our community to where we have our kids and our kids' kids are trust fund babies, okay? And so the trust is gonna take out a policy on every single beneficiary born into that trust estate, okay? And the trust is gonna pay into that policy, okay? So that is, um, you know, those are the most important things when we're talking about a trust. And you wanna get into the challenge because in the challenge, I'm gonna teach you guys actually how to set up a trust, okay? I'm gonna show you exactly what a trust contract contract looks like so that you guys are able to really set up your trust for, for the best interests of your business, for the best interests of your family. Okay. So that's all that I got for you guys tonight. I'll pass Marvin. it back to Marvin. Thank you, Marvin. Give it up for, give it up for Christina. She crushed it. Give it up. Give it up for put some fireballs in the comments if you got some great information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank from you. From that. Appreciate it. Yes. Seeing all the fireballs. So I'm the GOAT in the insurance business, and she's a GOAT when it comes to the trust. So when you combine us together, that's crazy. That type of value is, I, I haven't seen it. So that's amazing. Appreciate you coming on. Um. So that's a major game, you all. Um, so it's two things that I want to tell you. If you stick around for a few minutes, I'm actually going to tell you how to get your cash value policy set up with my team completely complimentary, which means we're going to show you how to structure it the right way, how to get the highest amount of cash value, how you can borrow from it um, earlier in 30 days, in many cases, as early as 10 days following the time that you put the money into it. Um, I'm gonna give you that link in just a minute. But before I give you that link, which is complimentary, I also want to tell you all about my five day challenge where we're going in depth, in detail about how to structure your policies, how to structure your trust, how to design your trust, how to design your life insurance, how to make them work together, how to multiply your money, how to borrow from your policy to buy assets. What type of assets should you buy? How to multiply your money and make it work for you three to four to five times off the same dollar, right? This is going to be a virtual event. So you could do it from the comfort of your home. You could do it when you're traveling. You could do it wherever because it's on your computer. Um, there's going to be two different options, you all. There's going to be the option for the virtual session um, on Facebook or the option for the virtual session on Zoom where you actually get Q&A with both me and Christina, which means we'll be able to answer your questions back and forth about your individual situation and do basically some free consultation um, on those particular calls. That's the, the VIP is 30 minutes, and then everybody gets together for the hour-long general session every day for five days. That starts on January the 8th, okay? So that starts on this Monday. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through 
take a second. I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to give you that link. And then I'm going to show you how you can meet with my team to get your insurance policy set up as well. So just give me one second. Let me go ahead and share that um, screen. One second. Okay. So in just five days, five days, this is what we're going to go over. Scaling your sales and marketing so you can make more money. We're going to talk about building your teams. We're going to go in detail about becoming your own bank through life insurance. That's uncovering the power of life insurance as a financial tool, learning how to become your own financial cornerstone, leveraging the life insurance for wealth accumulation and strategic financial planning. We're going to talk about asset protecting using your trust much more in depth than we did today. We're going to dive into the world of trust structures and asset protection gain insights into safeguarding your assets through strategic trust planning, ensuring that your hard or earned wealth is secure and that nobody can take it from you. It is completely protected. And additional ways of earning income, how to focus on passive income, explore diverse income streams and the art of passive income, not the kind of passive income that requires effort, but the kind that you can make money off your money while you continue to focus on the one thing in your business is going to get you that financial freedom, okay? In addition to that, um, i got a couple of special guests and some bonuses for you. Um, I've already got a confirmation of one special guest who is Denise, the broker, who's going to talk to you about how you can be an investor internationally in international real estate in Dubai. That's going to be just an extra bonus. And we got a few more extra things for you. Um, if, if the only thing you learn from that is how to properly structure your investment accounts. You just pay for it a hundred times over. If the only thing that you learn from this is the type of trust that you should get and how to structure that trust for, for a very inexpensive cost, you just made all of your money time a hundred, right? If the only thing you learn is one passive investment idea that you don't know about that you're doing right now. If you avoided a mistake, such as investing with the wrong life insurance company, trying to do what I'm telling you to do, but doing it with the wrong person that costs you an extra 70% in fees. If you could just learn how to avoid that one thing, would it be worth your money? If you can learn some real estate tips on how you can begin to make that passive income, is it worth it? What is it worth it to you? Many of you all think it's probably like $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 to go through these five days and learn this information. What if I told you you could get this today for as little as $97? Not 9,700, not 970, $97. Or if you chose to get the VIP, that is only $197. Uh, $197. So if you do it today, you don't have to pay the full value. $497 for the general, only $97 if you do general. Not, I mean, $797 for the VIP, only $197 if you do VIP today. So what I want to do is I want to see who the action takers are. We're going to go ahead and drop the link for you to take advantage of the VIP or the general. I recommend the VIP, but of course you can do whatever you want to do. Um, and those relationships that we're going to build throughout this challenge is going to be amazing, right? This isn't one of uh, a, a guru challenge where we're dealing with some guru talking to you about the next best passive income idea. You're talking to a 18 year Hall of Fame financial advisor who speaks all around the country and trains advisors how to do their job. And you're you're talking about a trust specialist. And her words and her knowledge speaks for itself, right? This ain't some fake information. So what we're going to do is go ahead and drop that link. Um, if you do VIP, you also get the recordings as well. So it's going to be at around um, 6 p.m., um, 6 to 7. I think it's 6.30 Eastern for VIP and 7. Starts so the general session Eastern time um, every day for those five days. So it's in the evening. Yep. So go ahead and click on that link. And I want to celebrate 
some of the people who are the first movers. And I want to actually reward a couple of people who actually take some action tonight with some special bonuses. So uh, let's see who takes advantage of that. Um, go ahead and click on that link, scaleyoursuccess.com slash tickets. And I want to shout out your name and let you know that we appreciate you for taking some action today. Um, let me tell you about some success stories of what came from the five-day challenge. Um, what's coming from this five-day challenge? I met um, people in my five-day challenge who joined, a couple people joined my insurance team. One person who joined my insurance team, literally in three months, his name is Keon. He was making about $7,000 a month in his business. When he joined my challenge and then signed up for my program and joined my team, within three months, he started making over $100,000 at the age of 21, over $100,000 a month. Brandon Slaughter. Um, I, I taught Brandon Slaughter was a police officer, you all, making less than $80,000 per year. He joined my five-day challenge. I helped him tweak a lot of things, helped him to start his business and build up his career. Brandon Slaughter got paid in two months, 250, I'm sorry, was 250, yeah, $250,000. No, I take that back. Brandon Slaughter, I got to, I got to look at this. It was actually $350,000 in two months, $350,000. He made $80,000 as a police officer by joining this program. Latoya Jackson, not related to Michael Jackson. Her name really is Latoya Jackson. Uh, she joined my program. Latoya Jackson just made $250,000 in a couple of months. Now, obviously, those are some of my best success stories. Not everybody comes in making $250,000 a month. But you're actually looking at one right now who joined my program who just spoke to you. Christina. Yvette, she joined one of my programs, and Christina immediately made $10,000 in a week. Just started crushing it. And she's crushing her business. Not only that, I saw her work ethic and I was like, I need to partner with you. We need to do some work together. And now she's joining my webinars and I'm joining some of her webinars and I'm helping her make money and she's helping me make money because what we do, it kind of crawl, it, it kind of goes together. So it works out. Um, Sharice Richards, another person who joined my five-day challenge at the end of my five-day challenge. Um, Cherie started making about $20,000 a month consistently. Before that, she was only making about $3,000 a month. Um, I can go on and on. Um, Gerda. Gerda joined one of my programs. Now, Gerda, she's just getting started, but Gerda has already got, got her professional licenses. She's already started her LLC, started her business, put herself into a position to win. Um, amazing. There's so many other stories. Um, Ernest Moss, he was able to go from working at a job, making over uh, making over six figures on his job, being able to put himself into a position where he was able to start a youth movement, a youth camp, which is something that he enjoyed. And he had the structure and the accountability to do it. Rosa Rodriguez, another person who was in my mentorship, she quit her job two months after joining the program. After she quit her job, she started making five times as much as she made on her job within six months. So I could keep going on and on and on and on and on and on and on, but I want to celebrate some people who actually signed up and took the first step and planted the first seed into their business and into your into their career. So let me go ahead and go and see who took advantage of it. All right. And Margo, we got a bunch of people action. commenting in the chat, bro. We got a bunch of people commenting in the chat. They got their ticket. So just want to give a shout out to all those people that are commenting. And if you're working on getting a ticket, put working on it in the chat. I see Louise got his ticket. Congratulations, Louise. He's the first one to get his ticket. So for you being the first one to get your ticket, Louise, because action takers are money makers, I'm going to give you my $2,000 course for free on becoming your own bank. So um, I got my team on here. If you can get his information, uh, his email information, et cetera, we're gonna, we're gonna send him my course absolutely free. 
Um, and then he also got the VIP. So we want to reward him for taking action and being the first mover. Um, we got Sierra McCray. Sierra McCray also took advantage and she was, you know, it was so close because, okay, so here's the deal. Louise, Sierra, and Damien all got their ticket within 10 seconds of each other. So Damien, Sierra, and Louise. Uh, Damien Clark, Sierra McCray, and Louise. Um, is it Gonzalez? Um, all got the ticket within 10 seconds. So what I want to do is give all three of them the course. Because I don't want to punish somebody by five seconds. Even though if this was a if this was a sprint and you lost by a tenth of a second, you would lose. But I ain't gonna look at it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and give all three of them the course. So make sure that we take care of them, Pat and Ice. Um then we got Brandon Mines, who got his ticket. And by the way, it's not it's no coincidence that all three of those people, Louise, Sierra, and Damien, got VIP. Uh, then we got Brandon Mines, Delante Palmer. Shout out to Brandon. Shout out to Delante. And then Cherie. Got a chance to meet Cherie in um, Dallas this past week. Excellent person. So, so glad that you have joined the challenge. It's going to be amazing to get to know you more over that particular time frame. Um, oh, wow. We got more people who, who got their tickets. Uh, we have... Elizabeth Benjamin, VIP. Shout out to the VIP. Um, shout out to VIP people. Uh, Elizabeth Benjamin. And also we got Veronica Simmons. Ver I'm mean, not Simmons. I'm sorry. Veronica Simpson. Veronica Simpson, who's also VIP. This starts Monday, you all. Do not, do not, do not pass this opportunity up. Um, we are going to change your life. What you're going to learn in this five days, I haven't met one person who attended this five-day workshop who didn't leave saying that we feel like we robbed you. How did you give us all of this information for only $197? In fact, the webinar that we gave you today was for free, was worth $197. And this was free. So imagine what we're going to give you when you commit to yourself and make an investment in yourself. You, you can't even imagine the mindset shift that you're about to experience within these five days. You got to go out and tell some friends, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, shout out to, is it Hader? Hader? Hader Re Re uh, Rivez? I know I said your name wrong. I really apologize. But Hader, he is a VIP. Shout out to him for getting his VIP ticket. Who else do we have in here, you all? Don't miss this opportunity. Do not miss this opportunity. Christina was only able to give y'all 15 minutes of her information, and she goes on for, she can teach on this topic for 20 hours straight, and she gave you 15 minutes, a wealth of information. So you want to be able to take advantage of this. Let's see. We are running out of time, you all, for this offer, for this deal. Some of y'all thought that I was about to make a, a $3,000 offer, $97 at the lowest point, $197. We just gave y'all two hours of value, and the only offer is a $197 offer, just so that you can at least take the next step. Don't stop yet with this information, you all. There's deeper levels that I can go in. There's deeper levels that we can go in that you're going to know by the end of these five days. And you're going to be smarter financially than probably anybody in your family, most of your friends. You're going to know more. You're going to be doing more. You're going to be making different changes. You're going to be immersed in different information. I tell people all the time, if you want to grow yourself, there's two things you need to grow. You need to grow your mindset. And you need to grow your financial literacy skills. Financial literacy is something that's not taught in school. It's not taught in school. 
and it's not even taught by the government. It's not taught in the workplace. They want you to follow their financial system, but they not they don't teach you the financial system of the wealthy. In fact, even as a financial advisor, when I was first a financial advisor, I realized that I didn't know real financial literacy. When I went and talked to wealthy people, they said I was crazy telling people the things that I was telling them, saving your 401k, pay extra towards your house. Like I got shut down when I talked to wealthy people about how they actually think about money. You're going to learn how the wealthy think about money and how you can think differently when it comes to amassing a fortune of money as well. So let's see, do we have anybody else that we need to celebrate? Yes, of course we do. Shout out to, it just said, Shay, is it Shay, S-H-A? Shout out to Shay for getting your ticket. Two minute warning, y'all. Two minute warning. You got two minutes. It's 8.52 Eastern now. I'll give you until 8.55. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop talking. If you already got your ticket, you cool. I'm going to stop talking for the next three minutes. Once I shut down the price, unless I'm just feeling real generous, Usually the price is not the same once I shut this down. So I'm giving you all the opportunity to take advantage of this at a major discount. Jere Danielle. No, I just said your name wrong. I'm so sorry. This is my friend from my mentorship. So if this is something you want to do, hit me up. And um, if you're in transit, I know you're good for it. So I got you. Just hit me up. All right. Two minutes. Two minute warning. 853. Who are we celebrating? There's 44 people still left in the room, you all. That's one of my favorite numbers. That means alignment, which means if you're in this room right now, you are in this room for a reason. You're one of the 44 people whose lives is about to change this year in 2024, financially and also um, with your relationships, not just the prosperity when it comes to money. We also want prosperity when it comes to a lot of different things as well. Um, yep, Louise, I got you. Just hit me up. All right, who else do we got here? Right. One minute. Oh, we got um Mario Joseph. Shout out to Mario Joseph. Getting his ticket. So this is y'all time, y'all. We got too many people in here that don't have your ticket. So congrats to Mario. 